I think there's been a ton of different things that have changed the way skateboarding filmmaking has been made. But without a doubt, the VX1000 is the most prominent thing that's ever changed skateboarding videos. I was always up for technology. So any new technology, I wanted to buy it if I could afford it. So high eight, mini DV, whatever it was, I wanted to get the latest and greatest. So uh, VX1000 was just sort of a stepping stone for me. Although I appreciate how well designed it was unintentionally for skating. Here we go, here we go, here we go. That VX was that one. It was like, you could only get it this way. Obviously kids film stuff with other cameras these days and there's these high-end productions, but that like hardcore group of skaters, you know, they still respect the VX. There's a certain look to it too, obviously. I think that's just timeless with skateboarding. The VX is so iconic that you're seeing like jewelry made. You've got t-shirts, you've got skateboards. Like, I know a dude that got a VX tattoo on the side of his head. A huge VX 1000 on the side of his head. That's dedication. It's got like a certain energy. The HD went maybe a bit too far as opposed to like a camera like the VX, you know, which was more connected with the spirit of skateboarding. If you look back at skateboarding videos, the real golden era, is the VX1000 with the Century Fisheye. It just felt like you were in there more. You were in the action and it felt impactful. I think it's so respected and still sought after because of all those rad videos like Inling Workshop and Girl and Transworld. Like those were huge years in skateboarding and they will always be iconic. And they were all captured by the VX1000. So this camera came out in 1995. 27 years later, this camera is still being used. That was the fucking raddest thing I've ever seen done in skateboarding. <laughs> the VX1000 is hands down the best camera for filming skateboarding. And I wish I could still use it to this day, but times have changed. The VX look is a little bit more raw in the moment. It feels like you know, less high production and more just about capturing the action, less frills and more thrills. The handle, my gosh. This is glorious, just that handle. The handles, I mean the handle, <laughs> really. The idea that you can hold it from the top and get low and get the fisheye is like, that's what started follow cam footage. We were trying it back in the day, like Bones Brigade stuff, but it wasn't as up close and it wasn't as consistent as it became with the VX1000. So I think that's the spark of what you see nowadays when you see people filming and following. It all started there. All these other HD handles that they build for these DSLRs, they still aren't as good as this original handle. To just like, board gotta hit me, boom, just retreat, boom, abort. It's just so maneuverable compared to any other camera. Gotta love it. It's genius. The thing that I really like about the VX still is the way that skateboarding sounded in it. It was crisp, it was loud. The tricks, like you could really hear the snap and the pop. I still, to this day, use VX audio. 
John Holland and I created a VX audio library where all of our snaps, the lands, the grinds is from a VX. So even an edit that I still do to this day, if I shoot it on any other camera, I'm still using VX audio in all these videos. It just sounds like skateboarding. VX1's audio when skateboarding, they like go hand in hand, like it's insane. Like some of the clips I watched growing up, the audio was like my favorite part. The audio is the best audio you're ever gonna get on any camera in my opinion. I'm like, I'm triggered by remembering tapes breaking and rewinding and recording over footage by accident. That's what this brings me. Not, not like, oh, I remember shooting this and I was like, oh no, DV. You wouldn't play back the footage. You wouldn't use it to fast forward or rewind. You always had like a second camera. You had some other option. You didn't want to glitch the tapes. You, there was all these things you did even back then to try to make it survive. I like that we've entered the digital era, but good luck with these guys. A happy medium, I would say first and foremost, it's independent films. First released in 2008, it's just a group of friends that kind of just turned into a crew and we've just been doing it ever since, thankfully. So right now we're working on a happy medium six uh, Happy Medium is kind of synonymous with the VX1000. For Buster and me, a part that's always been important is how far can we push this camera? You know, there's only so many settings in it, but it's definitely very important to us that we set a good example of what the VX1000 should look like. It's beautiful. It's, it's this interlaced image that doesn't exist anymore. There's something really special about that. VX footage, DV footage on a proper NTSC monitor. It looks so much different than it looks on the internet. Now the majority of the kids today are watching this interlaced video that's been deinterlaced into progressive on a high resolution screen. That's not what it looks like. The actual purity of what this is supposed to capture is lost. To me, it looks shitty. Watching that footage on a CRT screen, the screen it was meant to be viewed on, looks phenomenal. I always remember people would just have like all these different fish eyes. You know, and they were generally like, I don't know, a hundred bucks or something like that. And a lot of those lenses were janky. And then there was a shift. There's a change. Century introduced the MK1. A real fisheye, real glass, made for that actual sensor, bayonet now. Game changer. Wow, the best fisheye lens ever made. To me, they're just together. If you use the VX, you had the death lens. The death lens? No, I, I don't. I don't really know. It, it, it probably has something to do with Star Wars. Well, with the death lens, I can understand why it's called the death lens because you are getting so close to the action that you could possibly die with a board to the head. <laughs> yeah. I never called it the death lens. Well, we called it the dope lens back in the day because it was like basically you got everything, but you're guaranteed to get the trick though. So I think you're just kind of like in a death zone, you know what I mean, danger zone. This is the first Tilt Mode video titled Tilt Mode. We were making fun of the fact that the MK1 was so sought after. We made a clip that was two paper plates glued together and spray painted black and it was mounted on the front of a VX1000. And we referred to that as the clip with the death lens. And we put it on the cover of the video. Like we have the death lens says it right there. The romantic side of me likes to think like, 
yeah, we just called it the Deathlands and it stuck. Maybe it was just in the cosmos and it was the death of every other lens because they all sucked in comparison. Obviously skateboarding looks cooler when you're closer to the action. Also the aspect ratio, the four by three. You can just frame everything so perfectly. I remember exactly the first time I saw some footage filmed with it, Element Tour video that was made by Dan Wolf. And I was blown away right away, like, what is this footage? What is this lens? It's like super wide, super dynamic. And I was like, oh my God, what is this? Like, it looks, looks amazing. I think I subscribed to Video Maker Magazine and there was like a quarter page ad in the back. Century put in there for this fisheye. I don't even know if there was a picture of it, I think it just said 0.3 times and most of the fish eyes we used at the time were 0.42. That was like the skateboard fish eye. And I just thought 0.3, that must be wide. I'm gonna try this thing. And I bought it like sight unseen. No pun intended, Greg. It arrived and I put it on my VIX 1000. I was like, oh my God, this thing is amazing. I've been waiting for this, you know, my whole skateboard filming career. I took it to the Santa Monica triple set to film Jeremy Ray and Donnie Barley. And Atiba was there, and I remember everyone there was just tripping out on it. They're like, what is that thing, you know? People have told me that that's the first clip ever filmed with a death lens. That may or may not be right. It sounds about right, but I'm not positive. Once we had the Sentry lens, it was like just point that fucking thing and get it, you know? <laughs> you could like get it in the right zone. As long as you're pointed in the direction and up a little bit, you're golden. I didn't realize how close you could possibly get and still fit, you know, everything in. I mean, the death lens like changed everything. Other people look at it, they might think it doesn't look very realistic, but growing up in the 90s, we were trained that this is what skateboarding looked like, was through this lens. First thing I tripped on was the price. I was like, oh my God, it's so expensive and it's huge and the glass is super big and obviously you have to get like super close. So I was like, wow, we're gonna scratch it up like right away, you know, it's gonna get fucked like in 10 minutes. <laughs> Sorry. If you get this lens scratched, there's no repairing in it. And now we're at that point to where it's really, really hard to get a hold of one. We figured that the demand would just go away. When the new camera came out, we had some inventory, but as we used that up, we had no intention of continuing to make that lens. We just figured that that was gonna be dead. The Century Optics Mark I was discontinued in 2019. We were just like freaking out. We're like, what do we do? Buying a used one off eBay was not going to work for us and our standards. There were very persistent customers that just badgered the sales staff. And these people, they want the Mark I, they're calling us up. Gosh, maybe if we make enough noise, Century will be like, oh crap, you know, all these, all these skateboarders still need that lens. So we ended up making a petition. Seventy six hundred signatures, which is pretty insane. But to me, it also makes sense because it's just the standard, as far as I'm concerned, for fish eye lenses. So we put it back into production. And they sold out in thirty seconds. Thirty seconds, a lens that old still sold out. Oh my god! That really only works for one thing in the world, and that's skateboarding. When I got the job to make the DC movie, I started making that movie on film. This was right after the end. We spent a year shooting film, and then at some point, they decided they preferred shooting with the death lens and the VX. It was the first time I'd ever heard anybody decide they want to have a shittier looking movie than this high quality 
production and that we were working on. I think that was at a point when they realized that it doesn't have to be just Greg Hunt shooting with a VX. Almost anybody could handle a VX. Skaters can get great shots. When your friends got this camera and got the death lens and stuff, it felt awesome. It felt like you were making a legitimate video. I mean, I personally think it has a very solid history in skateboarding, but I also think it has a future. And it kind of has like a built-in credibility to it. Like a kid that starts filming now can get his hands on a VX and he's going to produce something that can be appreciated by the skateboarding community. As opposed to like, you know, someone grabbing a DSLR from Walmart. It's just not gonna be the same. In my intro in Happy Medium 2, I'm trying to hard flip this double set and my board hits the camera and uh, it gets all glitchy and Buster just ends up like hitting it on the side a couple times, like how you'd whack an old TV to get it working again and it just started working again. All right, it's fixed. I've been working on the VX for about 16 years now. You know, the VX1000 is the first thing that I actually took the time and care to actually learn what everything did and just very meticulously disassemble it. I broke it down as much as I could and it got to a point where I couldn't get into the, the front of the camera, the lens area. I got a hacksaw and I hacked the front of it off to see, you know, what was holding, what was anchoring the body to the lens. Once I was able to look and see what was going on, I was like, all right, it's on, I know how to get up there now. And that's when I started learning what, what the parts did. I'm not really surprised on the amount of requests I get. They're coming in like a conveyor belt. It's hard to keep up. I have so many coming in from all over the world. I had this one custom painted by my friend Aaron Burgundy. It's one of the first ones he's ever painted. It's green and yellow for a shake junt. And it was just so motivating for people to see not only the VX, but the shake junt VX. It's like, wow, we're filming for the shake junt video. Let's get some. The reason I think that people are still filming with the VX1000 is nostalgia. Those days, like the glory days of the VX, maybe they're just trying to maintain and keep that grit and that style. I appreciate the purest aspect, but I don't want to see low res stuff. I just love that we're into 4K, 8K. You can shoot something ultra wide and then zoom in on the frame you want and still have high res footage. Like, I think that's where we should be. I can tell you this, if I'm gonna try something super hard, I don't wanna know that the only camera that shot it is a VX1000. <laughs> Yeah, you can film with the VX, but you're not gonna get the primary angle like you can get the secondary back of the line angle. Like you're not, you're not getting up in there with the fisheye with the VX. Our TVs are widescreen now. Back in the day when we were watching it, all the TVs were square. So it's like, you know, I feel like the format worked out a lot better back in the day, but obviously it's something that we can't really get out of our system. Like if I'm in Florida with some homies or if I'm going somewhere random, I could just like bring a VX and like film shenanigans with, cause it's like, so much fun. I think that's what a lot of people associate the VX with is fun. It's a very easy camera to throw in a backpack, Sick. travel around with your friends and document. So it's always gonna have its history, but do I think that it will be here forever? No, nothing is here forever. I'm not sure what's gonna happen when these cameras run out. Uh, I'm actually a little worried for skateboarding in general. I feel like if it were to die out, that'd be a very sad day. The VX's future doesn't look fully grim. I will find parts one way or the other, but it is a little bit scary. You know, it's getting down to the near end. I have to salvage every little piece, even though I might think it's broken, you know, I have to put that aside. So every little piece is like gold to me, so. Oh yeah, I'm gonna fight to the end. I'm gonna keep that camera going for as long as I possibly can. I don't think skateboarding can move on from the VX, the affinity and love for that camera because it's so ingrained in skateboarding culture and skateboard video history. People used that camera for 15 years maybe or so. That was like the standard camera. So you have a generation or generations of skateboarders who were 
raised on videos made with that camera and it had that look and feel. I love shooting 16 because when I see 16 and I shoot it at like 32 frames a second, for me it feels like Wheels of Fire, Sick Boys. Like that's, it's a feeling that I got when I was a kid that's like the most special time, you know, when you're watching videos and everything is so magical and everything gets so imprinted on your brain at that time when you're just kind of falling in love with skateboarding. This is how skateboarding will be remembered. This camera. I don't think it's about the tool per se, you know? It's about the experience of it. As long as they're skateboarding, there's gonna be someone that's got a refurbished VX and they're out there filming with the death lens that they bought off eBay for $20,000 because it's the last one. Someone's gonna be filming with it no matter what. Heck yeah, dude. That's so good.